Hello everyone and welcome back to Football Manager 2024 and the first episode of our second season at Newcastle United where we are the champions of England and we've also had a huge boost in our transfer budget. Now the place that we've got to in this season uh, is that pre-season is now finished and we are just about to take on Tottenham Hotspur in the FA Community Shield. Uh, they managed to win the FA Cup last season. We won the Premier League and it sets us up nicely to potentially get a second bit of silverware in just a few months and uh, in a little over one year as manager of the team, which would be really nice. And then we've got an easy start to the season with Fulham and, and Luton. Uh, and then we've got big games against Liverpool, Arsenal and Spurs. A, sort of, a run of fixtures that nearly cost us the title last season. So hopefully we can power on through and get a good stack of points on the board against some of our rivals quite early on. Games against City, United and Chelsea, and then we also get a very nice run over the busy Christmas period. So the start to the season is going to be very important, but we will get a chance to make up lost ground if we uh, don't do as well in those opening games as we might have otherwise liked. Now the transfer window, uh, I did say at the end of last episode I was not looking to make too many additions and not go too crazy. Um, i sort of done that I think um, just looking at last season transfers here one player that we did bring in on the 21st of June was Giorgio Scalvini you can see he's currently worth 113 to 130 million pounds we signed him for 76 he had a very good season for Atalanta last season and he just looks like a top quality center back to come into the team good determination good work rate good teamwork and in all the major statistics he's carrying very good figures to play uh, in central defense for our team uh, and then other players that we brought in we brought in a bit of uh, a focus on youth uh, over the summer uh, Callum Doyle has been signed for Manchester City another defender uh, can play at center back and left back and looks like he's going to develop into a top quality player you can see his valuation there is pretty high Two up to 100 million for a player that we signed for 57. Lewis Hall has joined on a permanent deal for us. So that was a pre arranged transfer, 28 million. He's so versatile. He's going to be an excellent uh, player for the future. Then we've signed Gertrudia. Uh, I don't speak Dutch. I don't know if that is even said correctly. He's a bit more mature, 24 years old. You can see 48 to 65 million, but he's got excellent physicals. And if we're playing him in the right back position, that's going to be a huge factor for us. But the fact that he can also uh, jump, he's got good balance, he's got pace and strength, that all of that is going to help us as well if he plays in the centre. So I've gone for quite versatile players that can play across the defence and back us up quite nicely. And then we have Buanani. Uh, from Nice who's joined us for 30 million he can play attacking down the right he's only 19 he's quite young but again another player that's got a decent uh, bit of a future in front of him on my Wonder Kids video he became one of the better players in the game so I'm hoping that history repeats itself uh, in this one as well 13 work rate 15 determination he's got the right factors to go on and develop into an even better player now in terms of players leaving Jamal Lewis went to West Ham for 6 million Carrius left on a free Hendrick left on a free. Matt Target went to Al Ali for £48.5 million. And given I just signed a bunch of young defenders come in, and he's 28, uh, I don't think that he's going to be consistently um, performing at a £50 million player sale valuation. Um, you know, would I sign him for 60 to £70 million, which is probably the equitable figure in the game because it's easier to buy players and sell them. Uh, for decent money I'd say he's probably like I'd pay would I pay 70 million for Matt Target definitely not so I will sell him for nearly 50 million and he's on 625 grand a week which uh, hats off to him uh, he's making a nice living out there in uh, Saudi Arabia so uh, yeah playing with Frank Kessie very nice for him um, so yeah I'm pretty happy with how the squad's shaping up it's still a little bit big so I've been trying to offload players Dan Burn. I made a mistake of turning down a bid from West Ham for nearly 18 million earlier in the season uh, because I like Dan Burn. I think he plays well in the team he's an older player and we don't have too many of those he's a Newcastle boy but then we signed a bunch of defenders uh, and I think we're maybe a bit bloated in that area I'm not sure but if bids come in then he's one that can go uh, goalkeepers staying in the same I think Nick Pope's good for another year at least and then we can think about bringing in a nice wonder kid to maybe back him up for another season 
before taking over full time. The rest of the defence, I was never too unhappy with. We've got Liveramento and Trippier on the right, nothing to change there. Botman uh, now joined by Scalvini and Gertrudia in the middle. Shah obviously can play there. Doyle now is quite versatile, can play there as well. And then at left back, we've got Doyle, we've got Byrne, we've got Botman. Uh, and Lewis Hall can also play there. So no out-and-out left-back when Matt Target leaving, but I think we've got enough depth there that I'm not too worried. Uh, midfield was very good last season. It was always a defence and maybe up front uh, or on the wings where we were having the most trouble. So no changes in midfield. Joe Linton, Longstaff, Willow Tonali, above uh, Jean Neves and now Lewis, well, and Lewis Hall now on a permanent deal. So good mixture of age range, lots of options, young players to bring in. Very happy with that. And then we are very bloated when it comes to uh, wingers. Um, so you can see Anthony Gordon's been very good for us. Jacob Murphy I'm trying to sell, but nobody's come in for him yet. Almiron also there on the right now, 30 years old. Uh, Quold's been promoted into the first team. Minter's been promoted. We've got Elliot Anderson and Jay Turner-Cook. Uh, who can play central midfield or on the uh, wings. Uh, Tanner Cook can also play up front. Ekaveri, who we signed last season, is very good as well in breaking through. Then Harvey Barnes, Facundo Torres, who was fantastic for us last season uh, and no doubt will continue to do, be so this season. And then up front, we have Wilson and Isaac with Ekaveri, Tanner Cook, Quoll, Anthony Gordon, plenty of players, Joe Linton, who can fill in in that central midfield role. So we've got a big squad. We've got lots of versatility. Um, I think some players need to leave, certainly before we consider signing any other players. But um, yeah, generally I'm, I'm fairly happy with how the squad is shaping up. And then if we look at today and how we're thinking about lining up, I don't know if I want, I think I might have accidentally uh, just put him uh, in that position. Let's get Harvey Barnes in there instead. Um, Isaac, Barnes and Almiron are all going to start in the front three. Neves is going to start this game with Willock and then Bruno just behind them. Burns going to fill in at left back in this one with Botman. Scalvini making his debut. Trippier on the right and then Pope in goal. Uh, and this is kind of one I wanted. I didn't want five new players at the start of the season coming into the first 11. We've got one player going straight into the first 11 with Scalvini and then everybody else will start to integrate through the season, come off the bench. We've only got G Gear Trudio on the bench anyway. Uh, and the rest of them are all uh, just sort of in the stands, I guess, uh, for a Community Shield match. Um, so we should be able to beat the Spurs side. Let's have a look if they've brought anybody in this season. You can see they've got uh, Vicario in goal, uh, Van der Ven, Udogi. I did try to sign Van der Ven actually in the summer, but they wanted like 120 million. So I said no to that. Andre's come in. Oliver Skip's back in the team. Petro Poro in midfield. Kulusevski. Uh, Sotichek and Toklamati. So an interesting team, really. Uh, Tangier and Dembele on there. I'm not particularly worried by this team. They've got Hansi Flick as manager these days, who did very well for them to win the FA Cup. Uh, but let's get this game started and see if we can carry on where we left off last season with that excellent charge to the title. And immediately we've given the ball away. Spurs on the attack with Sotichek. Plays it into Skip. And now Kulusevski turns, shoots, and finds the back of the net inside 30 seconds. Excellent start to the season for Tottenham Hotspurs, but terrible start to the season for us here. Such check down the right. I mean, it was a bit too easy. We were keeping our lines well, but Skip there just played Lin. Kulusevski was able to turn, too much space behind him, no pressure there. Uh, and just a turn and finish, I mean... Another day, you might get a defender blocking that, might go straight at the keeper, but this time it goes in the back of the net. And now Kulusevski with the corner. We haven't done well with these last season, but this one seems to pass us by reasonably well. But it is all Tottenham Hotspur at the moment, and we do need to get our heads into this game. Ten minutes in, and we've got the possession, but we are not getting any shots. We're not creating any chances. We've not had any corners. We really need to pick it up a little bit. It's Kulusevski... Plays it back to Romero. Andre in behind for Pedro Porro, who does score. I think he might have been offside when that went in. And indeed, it is disallowed. But the team really need to buck up a bit here because we are 1-0 down. And it could become worse much more quickly than it is. Scalvini did well to win that. It's come through to Isaac, who's hit the post, and the flag goes up anyway. Scalvini did well winning the ball and then creating an attack. That's what we brought him in for. But Isaac there just straying offside as he got through and hit the upright of the post. Now Trippier with the throw in to Willock. Sends it back to Pope. 
Botman. Over to Barnes. Huge amount of space for Dan Byrne here. Plays it into the middle, but not very well. And it's intercepted. Trippier down to Willock. And Almiron with more space now in a dangerous position. And he does the damage. Miggy Almiron, 30 years old now in the prime of his playing career. And he has just shown us how good he can be. Trippier did well to rescue that after Byrne sort of let the chance go. Almiron charged into the box and an excellent finish past Vicario, Vicario, Vicario um, in the Spurs goal. And it is 1-1. Predro Porro now with a free kick. And that one goes over the top. Looks like we're being a bit more uh, sound defensively than we were last season. But at least from set pieces, I mean. But... We do have more work to do here because we're going in and it is 1-1. Bruno is struggling a little bit as well. Um, I think I'm going to bring Bove on for that. Barnes sends it back to Botman. Now, Byrne has again been caught out in that left-back position. And I've seen enough of Dan Byrne now in that left-back role. And Pedro Porro has just scored out of absolutely nothing. And I don't have a straight swap at left-back that I can make. So we're going to have to do one after this highlight. Pedro Porro there, all from the Dan Bird mistake, just charging forward. Nobody closing him down. He's allowed to run straight into the box. And then, I don't know if it takes a deflection or if it just goes straight in, but either way, that is just not good enough. And now we need to make some changes on the team. I think we're going to have to move Botman out to left back and then take Dan Bird off for Gertrudia to come on for his debut. So, Two brand new centre-backs now in central defence. I'm going to demand a bit more from the team now that we've got a goal down. And they do seem to be reacting a little bit to that. Trippier might need to come off as well. Amaron might need to come off. I mean, we still only have three shots and one on target. This is not the performance that we have come to expect from our very good team. Jacob Murphy is going to come on off the bench as well. Bentacourt out to Emerson Royale. Barnes does well defensively. It's not where I want him to be when we're a goal down in this Wembley game, but he's going on a long run trying to do himself, but he's given the ball away there, trying to play as a central midfielder. Now Bentecourt charging down the left, and the highlight does come to an end. I'm not sure what that highlight was for, other than Barnes showing a lot of willing, but not much delivery. I think Fabian Schaar is about to become our third left-back of the day. Do we have anything left in the tank here? We're going to have to encourage the team, regardless of what happens with this highlight. Scalvini back to Pope. Now Gertrudia out to Shah. Barnes back to Bove. Outside wide to Shah. Shao Neves. We haven't seen much of him, but he finds Izak. It's blocked. And Izak, the defender there, just sent that straight into the path of Izak, but he was not able to finish it. And it remains deadlocked at the moment. It's going to have to be Callum Wilson. Oh, we're out of substitutions. I'd rather keep Isak on and refresh central midfield than anything else. Can we do anything these last few minutes? Time nearly up as Liveramento throws the ball in but gives it away. Doggy clears it. Scalvini attacking that in the full-back position. Back to Liveramento. Ball goes into the centre. Van de Ven away. Scalvini still has it. Now both Scalvini over the top, Liveramento's in behind, and Longstaff and Isaac, and there's a free kick, Liveramento is offside there, the ball did eventually cross the line, but it looks like it might have been offside there from Liveramento, I don't know if there's VAR in this, uh, in this community shield, but both there with a beautiful turn of pace, finds Jacob Murphy with fresh legs, he doesn't do much, but Isaac is through, and Isaac has scored in the 95th minute, Presumably now it will be penalties, but Isaac there doing well, both doing really well, just took that central midfielder out of the game with his pace, found Jacob Murphy. He sort of fell into success there as the ball broke to Isaac and he tucks it home. We're glad we kept him on as he scores that crucial goal to make it 2-2. And that should, I think, take us to penalties. I'm fairly happy with the suggested order there. Let's see... If we can get the victory here from the penalty shootout, Isaac will take the first penalty. He's got us to this point. I guess he's done his job already as he has that one saved by Vitario. Now Donnelly, don't know who he is, but he's stepping up here to take the first penalty and he sends Pope 
the wrong way to make it 1-0. Next up, we have Fabian Shah having a go here. Taking his time over it. And he goes for it and finds the top corner. So we are on the score sheet, but we do now need Spurs to miss a penalty or Pope to save one. And Kulusevski's next. I'm not expecting him to miss. And indeed, Pope goes the wrong way yet again. Jao Nevers now. Young lad with a lot of confidence. And it's just been dented as Vissario saves another. Emerson next. Up against Pope. And he does tuck it home. So it looks like this is probably not going to go our way at this point. We're going to have to really slow animation, which gets very frustrating when these penalty shootouts end up being like 10 10. But it's good. Studia stepping up next on his debut. And he's missed as well. And they only have to score three penalties to go through here to lift the trophy, Spurs. FA Cup and Community Shield to Spurs since Hansi Flick came in. Well done to them. We've got the Premier League title. I'd rather that over the FA Cup and Community Shield. But this was not the most encouraging start to the season I could have imagined as we watch the Spurs players here lift a trophy that we definitely should have taken. You would have thought momentum was with us after that Isaac second goal so late in the day. But it shows Spurs' character that despite being pegged back in the last seconds... They still managed to win the shootout and lift the trophy. So fair play to Spurs. I don't mind it being Spurs. Uh, as long as it's not Man City or Liverpool or someone or Man United, that's fine for me. Just a bit of variety in the trophy winners is very, very nice. Now up next, we have Fulham. Uh, I think we'll watch the Fulham game. We might even watch the Liverpool game in this episode. And then maybe next time we can pick up with City, United and Chelsea in the next episode. Because I'm not expecting to make too many more transfers so let's go ahead and watch our first Premier League game of the season up next so a few changes for this game at home against Fulham no movement in the transfer market since the last game going in or out but we're going to bring Facundo Torres back into the team he's fit and fresh for a start in this one Joe Linton is going to join Tonali in the center with Bruno behind him and then we're going to play Doyle at left back and gear two dear at right back because Kieran Trippier is serving a suspension from the end of last season. But look how well he can play in that right back position. We've got Livramento there as well. Like We're so blessed on the right side of defence. But the left, we're maybe struggling a bit more. But hopefully Doyle uh, can do well for us. Last season he was on loan at Leicester. Did very well in the Championship. So we'll see today against Fulham. Who some might argue are a Championship level team in the game. Uh, no, I said in the game, not in real life. Um, it should be a good step up for him to see if he can perform in the Premier League today. Dan Byrne drops to the bench. There's nobody in that Fulham team that I'm particularly worried about. Um, so I would expect us to be winning this game and potentially winning it by a few goals as well. But as we saw with the Spurs match, it doesn't always work out how you think it will. But we might do well here early and Almiron there was played in well, but just whipped that ball beyond the far post. It was a beautiful build-up and effort, and Botman is booked inside two minutes, which isn't wonderfully encouraging. But here's Scalvini. He's given the ball away there, Scalvini. Oh, Almiron, what have you just done? There was no need to do that whatsoever so early in our first game of the season. And it gives me a little bit of a headache now as to what I do next. I think I might actually take Bruno off. Unless can Tonali play as a... Yeah, Tonali can play well. Yeah, that works better. There we go. Um, and then we're going to play without the defensive midfielder, which I don't think is essential for this game. But that is less than seven minutes in, and we've got Botman on our yellow card already. And we're down to 10 men. Gordon does well there with the tackle. But still, Fulham with that extra man, they're just going to get the second ball so much more often. And Adama puts the ball in. Pope there with punch. Like he's some sort of Spanish goalkeeper. Paulinha to Dekel Dobarive. Now Robinson, so much space there. Overloading down the left. And Robinson in. It's blocked away and comes out. And Doyle there playing his part in the centre as well. It's going to be a heck of a debut for him. Now defensively with us down to 10 men. Bassi 
with the corner. In it goes, Isaac away, and we do survive. And now Tonali's got an injury. Lower leg injury for Sandro Tonali. Obviously, I took off the wrong central midfielder. Luckily, Joe Neves can come on, but that's two of our three substitutional breaks dealt with. We haven't hit the 10-minute mark, but Scalvini has stolen the ball. He's one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper here. He gets through the middle, and he's hit the crossbar, Scalvini. So close there to an incredible potential debut goal. What a situation to get a debut goal in the Premier League that would have been. But we are just struggling now already. First game of the season. This is very difficult. It's Bruno there. Results to a speculative effort from a long way out. We do seem to be in control of the game, but we're going to get tired really quickly. So we've got to be strategic with that last substitutional break as Diop plays it back to Leno. And they're still like inviting the press from us deep in their own half of the pitch because they know if it works and they have a lot of space in behind. But Gordon's got the ball, he finds Isaac. And unfortunately, that was straight at Leno. And at the moment, we do seem the more dangerous team. But like I said, they'll invite us onto them, tire us out with our running game, and then look to benefit from that later in the match. But we will be able to make three substitutions in one go in the second half if we're getting tired. But Doyle does well there to pick up the loose ball and keep running with it. Finds Bruno, finds Isaac, and that is saved by Leno, pushing it around the post. And Isaac needs to be a little bit more clinical than he is being at the moment as Torres puts this one in. And Leno takes the catch. 25 minutes gone, and we are still utterly dominating this game as Leno sends it forward and it goes on to Robinson. Now Bassi, Deckled over Reeve, finds a Wobi. I think I've just cursed the team. They go back to Bassi. A Wobi. Gordon does well intercepting it, finds Secundo Torres. He's got Isaac through the middle, but Bassi intercepts. Now Castagna to Dharma Traore. Charging down the right flank, whips it in. Scalvini does well, getting it away. Now Gordon, out wide to Facundo Torres. We're using our width well, which can help when you're down to 10 men, but we've given it away, and now Adama Traore on the attack. Done away, he's trying back heels there, Torres, and it's come for Deco Dopa Reeve, who's hit the post, and we survive another chance. Not a good sign with our 1.5 XG and not scored yet. Uh, it could be a recurrence of last season's failings. Diop now trying to bring the ball forward as they build from the back with Bassi and Scalvini. A bit lucky there. He went for the tackle and it broke to Botman and could have left a player through on goal. Um, I'm, I'm happy with how Scalvini is settling in so far, to be fair. He's, he's active, uh, which is what I want. Torres, though, charging forward well. Doyle now back to Neves. Oh, he's just bent that past the post. Very close to a goal there and what would have been a debut assist for Doyle as well but it remains nil nil at the moment as we continue to push despite being the team down to 10 men we have definitely had the better of this first half and of course that means Fulham are probably going to score here right before half time Castagna into Reed. there's a Wobi and honestly this game is absolutely beyond belief um, 48th minute they have scored they've offered absolutely nothing but we just parted in central defence there left so much space for Awobi to run into and finish and now it's 1-0 to Fulham and this is absolutely awful from the team collectively that red card from Almiron even Botman's yellow card after 2 minutes Doyle's on a yellow card now Almiron getting sent off, Tonali getting injured, and we're down to 10 men, and now we just concede right before half-time when we've been doing so well up to this point. Scalvini now finds Bruno in behind for Gordon first time, finds Isaac, and he has completely missed the target. He's not been good enough up front. Uh, he's had so many chances. We're on 2.89 XG. Um, and we're going to have to make some changes here. Joao Neves, Gordon was there, but it's cleared away. I mean, changes it utterly necessary at this point. Joe Willock can come on. And Torres, I think, hasn't quite lived up to it, but there's nobody there I can bring on. Botman, I think, has been treading the line too long, so let's bring Shah on. And that's all of our substitutions used here as Dharma Traore tries to make it doubly worse. Now Castagna. 
sends it back to Diop. Raul Jimenez finds Andreas Pereira, finds Iwobi. They're using the extra man, and Iwobi makes it 2-0, and that's probably curtains for this game. We're going to make the triple substitution anyway and see if that can help us, but this is a really depressing first episode. Raul Jimenez to Andreas to Iwobi. Even he had an extra man if he needed him, but instead he took Pope on, and now he's got a brace. Alex Iwobi about to be the Fulham hero that sinks the league champions in their title defence at home against Fulham when we've had 2.89 XG with 10 men. Honestly, I don't understand what that problem is. Unless his tactic, maybe in an update to the match engine, has suddenly started to fail. But here's Jao Neves. Willock loses the ball. Adama Traore given free reign because there's no central, uh, defensive midfielder but Gertrudia takes up the mantle. Now Jao Neves. Ball comes to Torres. He's got three in the box. Jao Neves outside it. Finds Willock. Goes for goal. And Leno there hits it over the top. And we do have a corner which Torres will take. Scalvini's there but it's cleared away. And Adama Traore's pace continues to call us, cause us some issues here. As they look to build from the back with Diop. Must still be a chance coming here. Short pass and Doyle there with a the tackle. Luckily not one that gets him a second yellow. Shah to Doyle. Ball swung in. Callum Wilson is there. Holds it up. Sends it back to Gertrude. And now Willock to Jao Neves. And that was really well recycled by the team. Wilson could have just uh, panicked and gone for goal there. But he held up the ball well after Doyle found him out beautifully. Wilson did so well there. Sends it back to Gertrude. Willock, beautiful first time touch for the assist. And Jao Neves just planted that in the bottom corner. And there is still hope for us in this game. We've been cutting Fulham open at will. We need to keep doing that for the last few minutes now. And we've got to throw in here with Gertrude. Finds Gordon. Gertrude once more. Found Jao Neves. Now Wilson spins a defender. And it is blocked by Leno for the corner. Wilson seems to be making the difference since he came on. Gordon now with the corner. Ball goes in towards Scalvini, comes back out to Gordon, and he lets it go for another corner. Keep the defenders up there and see if we can get the goal. Gordon once more. Whips it in. Doyle's arriving, but Leno does take the catch. And nothing comes of that. 4.3 XG now up on the board for us. We're still not putting the ball in the back of the net enough. And time is running very short. 4.77 XG. Is this going to hit five with just one goal in the back of the net? Because that would be utterly insane for a team with 10 men. And there it goes. 4.7 XG with 10 men. And we lost 2-1 to Fulham. He had 1.57 XG. But apparently Alex Awobi is the most clinical finisher of all time. Um, I mean, what an awful bloody way to start your title defence. I'm definitely, like, I would love to just demote Almiron to the second 11 after that, but I'm not going to. We've got Fulham up next. We can bounce back in that game. Um, but I think, to be honest, the start to this season has not been going particularly well, uh, which means that I'm not just going to skip through sort of 10 matches. I think I'm going to have to come back with the next episode against Liverpool, Arsenal and Spurs. Hopefully we've beaten Luton in the meantime. Um, and this is just going to be a huge test. Like, even if we beat Luton, if we then fail against Liverpool, Arsenal and Spurs, we are three, point after five, three points after five games with an enormous amount of work still to do this season. So let's have a look forward to those games in the next episode, see if we can bounce back against Luton after this awful performance against Fulham. Do drop a like down below if you enjoyed this episode. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new. But until next time, see ya.